All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe, most especially Hong Kong. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I am going to be reviewing The Born Supremacy uh, by Robert Ludlum. This is book number two in his Jason Bourne trilogy. Um, came out in 1985. Book number one, The Bourne Identity, came out in 1980. This one came out in 1985. And now book number three, The Bourne Ultimatum, came out in 1990. So he was writing these about every five years in between kind of all the other thrillers he wrote. Anyway, The Bourne Supremacy. What interested me in reading this is because I had uh, read and reviewed The Born Identity about a year and a half, two years ago. Uh, but I was watching, I decided for some reason, to re-watch. Now, I haven't seen this since 1987 when it came out. But this is the old miniseries, The Born Identity miniseries with the Richard Chamberlain and the unbearably beautiful Jacqueline Smith. Um... And I remembered watching this in 87 and really liking it a lot. And um, it's one of the things that kind of spurred me into becoming a Robert Ludlum fan. And um, so I wanted to watch it again. So I found this copy on eBay. It came in the mail and I rewatched it. And then I was like, well, I got to read another Born book now. Um, this is really cool. This is a really cool old timey miniseries from the 80s. And it's just charming and all the... Uh, wrong and right ways if you know what i'm talking about i actually kind of enjoyed it more than the actual the uh the over the top jack reacher-esque born identity that was done uh by uh matt damon and the crew although this was dope also this is dope for its own reasons this is dope for a lot of other reasons um anyway just thought i'd mention that what about the born supremacy let's talk about the covers first you know i like graphic design and cover illustration we've got these colorful covers these books i bought back in the uh, i think in the back in the god they might have been back in the early 90s i bought these three books here and i still got them uh you know they, they are what they are i mean there's nothing special about them uh other than the colors and the little icon the little icon in the middle of both whatever anyway let's talk about this so kowloon it opens up in kowloon china i've been to kowloon Kowloon is right across the bay from Hong Kong. Spent about 10 days in a hotel in Kowloon, touring around Hong Kong and seeing all the things around Hong Kong. It was one of my favorite trips I've ever taken. I probably would never go back. I mean, I did this about 10 years ago. I don't think I would want to go back to, you know, that part. I just, it's different now. Back then it was different. Um, anyway, so the Kowloon Peninsula Hotel which I have been in. That's not the hotel I stayed in, but it is a seriously gorgeous hotel in Kowloon. And you can't help but not want to walk in it and just look around the lobby while you're there. But that, that's so in Kowloon Hotel, there's a hooded priest who's actually an assassin. And he's in the Kowloon Hotel and he uh, assassinates the Chinese vice premier. Kills him, dead. And then writes Jason Bourne's name in blood in the crime scene. Like, uh, okay, you yeah, know, I mean, like, oh, oh, well, clearly Jason Bourne did it then. The name is written in the crime. I mean, that's what murderers do. They write their, I, I did it. Anyway, it's a little bit more. There's reasons for this, okay? I, I mock it now, but there's reasons. Um, Because as, was it really Jason Bourne or was it an imposter? That's the question. So David Webb, a.k.a. Jason Bourne, um is uh, he's in a rehab slash medical facility getting treatment and his wife Maria is there and of course we know Maria from uh, or Mary from the first book and um, so things are happening they're, they're kind of just like okay what are we going to do with this you know people think Jason Bourne is back that the assassinations and then uh, there's a surprise kidnapping takes place and uh, which awakens the real Jason Bourne inside of David Webb and, you know, Jason Bourne is this skilled assassin. David Webb just wants to live a simple life as a married guy with his new love. Jason Bourne is the killer inside of him, the trained assassin. 
So there's a kidnapping that takes place that wakes up the real Jason Moore. And um, just it starts, uh, we're, we're once again just launched into an insanely action-packed um, Robert Ludlum thriller. And they just, and he's so, so adept at plot and counterplot, betrayal after counter-betrayal, double cross after double cross. It's just insanely action-packed. And on the, at the same token, we learn a lot of Asian history and the brutal politics of communist China during the 80s. And there are some hard, hard, difficult scenes of brutal murder to get through in this book. Um, just as the government does things to their citizens that is just horrifying. Um, now, this convoluted story takes Bourne into um, one of my favorite places I visited in um, Kowloon, which is the Kowloon Walled City. Now, Google the Kowloon Walled City if you don't know what it is. Um, it'll just blow your mind. Now, when I went there, the Kowloon Walled City had been torn down, and there's, and there's like a nice park there. But... Um, parts of it are still standing and it's just interesting it's just an interesting thing about Hong Kong and China and how communist China was so much different than actual Hong Kong because Hong Kong was run by the British at the time in the 80s and stuff anyway just google that so it takes him so this convoluted just plot that this chase this stuff that goes on takes him through all of the underbelly of Hong Kong and Kowloon the Kowloon walled city into Shanghai, into the mountains of China. It just takes them everywhere. And um, one of the things that was, I, I was, as I was watching the Born Identity, in conjunction with kind of reading the Born Supremacy book, I was noticing how difficult it was to communicate back just in the 80s when these take place. Um, because at one point, these characters become separated in Hong Kong. Nowadays, that just wouldn't be a problem. You could find, you could, you could hook up a, just immediately. Just you could either, if you couldn't text them with your cell phone, you know, you could maybe Facebook message them or Instagram message them or Twitter message or email them. I and mean, there's uh, so many ways you could just be like, within a minute, you could contact. Because there was no, there's no like, it's not like these people were being held captive or anything and they couldn't communicate it's like they were actually just in hong kong which is a massive city separated from each other and they needed to get together and contact each other and whether they didn't know any phone numbers to call they didn't know so other than just running into each other at random luck there's just no way they're gonna find each other which is just amazing because now it just seems so easy to just if you get separated now, it's just like, man, if you got separated just 30, 40 years ago, if you got separated from your from your travel people, unless you had a rendezvous spot already set up and ready to go. Unless, but if you you were... And it really becomes apparent in this novel as these people search and search and, and are just so worried and so like, how do I, how do I contact? How do I... What do I do? I just... I mean, I, they, they just seemed at their wit's end. And there were some scenes like that in this movie, too. Oh, so anyway, I just I just thought that was. I mean, all they had was payphones. I mean, and they, and if they didn't know a number to call, that well, the payphone didn't matter either. Um, anyway, so anyway, um, this is a cool book. I really liked it. Um, the Chinese vice premier has been brutally slain by a legendary assassin. World leader leaders ask the same fearful question: Why has Jason Bourne come back? Who is paying him? Who is next to die? But U.S. officials know the shocking truth. There is no Jason Bourne. The name was created as a cover for David Webb on his search for the notorious killer Carlos. By the way, all of that was spoiler warning. I just spoiled all of book one. Fuck it. Someone else has taken the name, the, the Bourne identity, and unless he is stopped, the world will pay a devastating price. So Jason Bourne must live again. Once again, Webb must realize his lethal skills. Because once again, like a nightmare relived, though, then I won't even, I'm not going to read any more of it because actually the, 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 it spoils some of this book. So anyway, cool book. I love Robert Ludlum books. What can I say? This is a good 9.5. God, this is a 10 out of 10. What am I talking about? 9.5. Fucking perfect thriller novel.